threats from intense and deadly storms ripping through the middle of the country, killing at least 50. In an extraordinary moment that has captivated global attention, an unexpected event has unfolded in the United States, leaving the world in awe. This astonishing occurrence is sparking widespread speculation and fervent discussion. Many interpreted this event as a powerful sign, heralding the imminent return of Jesus Christ. The implications are profound, reaching far beyond the immediate impact and stirring deep reflections on faith and prophecy. As we navigate this remarkable development, join us in uncovering the details and understanding its significance in the context of biblical prophecy. Stay tuned as we delve into the heart of this momentous event that has the potential to change the course of history and challenge our perceptions of the divine plan. In a dramatic and devastating turn of events, deadly storms and twisters have swept across the central United States, leaving a profound impact on multiple states and claiming numerous lives. This latest outbreak of severe weather, characterized by a series of powerful tornadoes and intense thunderstorms, has wreaked havoc from Texas to Ohio, causing widespread destruction and displacing thousands of residents. In a tragic series of events, at least 15 people have been confirmed dead as a wave of tornadoes swept through multiple states across the United States, leaving a trail of destruction and despair in its wake. The deadly storms, part of a larger severe weather system, wreaked havoc from the Great Plains to the Midwest, devastating communities, uprooting lives, and causing widespread damage to infrastructure. The National Weather Service had issued numerous tornado warnings in the days leading up to the storms, yet the ferocity and scale of the tornadoes caught many by surprise. Small towns bore the brunt of the damage, with entire neighborhoods reduced to rubble, and emergency services stretched to their limits as they struggled to respond to the widespread destruction. In Oklahoma, where some of the most severe tornadoes have struck, the conversation has been particularly intense. Churches and religious communities have gathered in prayer, seeking solace and understanding amidst the chaos. Many pastors and religious leaders have taken to their pulpits and social media platforms to address the question head on, offering interpretations that range from the storms being a test of faith to warnings of moral decline. Reverend John Michaels of a prominent Oklahoma City church, for instance, preached that these events are a wake-up call from God, urging people to return to more righteous living. His congregation, like many others, is torn between fear and faith, grappling with the notion that their suffering might hold a deeper spiritual significance. Further south in Texas, the response has been similarly introspective. Communities devastated by the storms have turned to their religious traditions for comfort and answers. In rural areas, where churches often serve as the heart of community life, the destruction has prompted a surge in religious gatherings and prayer meetings. Pastor Sarah Thompson from a small town near Dallas described the overwhelming sense of loss and desperation among her parishioners. She emphasized that while some see the storms as divine retribution, others view them as an opportunity for renewal and repentance. This dichotomy reflects a broader national conversation about the meaning and purpose of suffering, particularly in the context of natural disasters. In Missouri, the state capital of Jefferson City faced a devastating tornado that struck the core of the city, damaging not only homes, but also historical and religious landmarks. The destruction of these sites has led to poignant reflections among the faithful. Some see the damage to their places of worship as a profound sign, a divine reminder of the fragility of human constructs in the face of divine will. Father James O'Reilly, whose historic church was heavily damaged, spoke to his congregation about the importance of faith in times of trial. He pointed to the resilience of the community as a testament to their enduring spirit and divine purpose, suggesting that the rebuilding efforts could strengthen their faith and unity. Meanwhile, in Kansas, where tornadoes ravaged both urban and rural areas, theological interpretations of the storms have varied widely. Some residents, deeply rooted in evangelical traditions, have framed the disasters within an eschatological context, viewing them as harbingers of the apocalypse. This perspective is often fueled by a literal interpretation of biblical prophecies, 
particularly those found in the Book of Revelation. In contrast, other religious leaders advocate a more metaphorical understanding, emphasizing themes of renewal and divine testing rather than imminent end times. This theological diversity highlights the complex interplay between faith, interpretation, and disaster as communities seek to make sense of their experiences through the lens of their beliefs. The notion that these storms might be a sign from God or a prelude to the end times is a powerful and, for many, a comforting framework through which to understand their suffering. It provides a narrative that situates personal and communal loss within a larger cosmic story, offering a sense of purpose and direction. However, this interpretation also raises complex theological and ethical questions. If these storms are indeed a message from God, what is the nature of that message? Is it one of judgment, warning, or perhaps an invitation to deeper faith and communal solidarity. In the broader context of climate change and environmental degradation, some religious leaders have begun to incorporate these themes into their interpretations. They suggest that the increasing frequency and severity of such storms may be a divine response to humanity's stewardship of the Earth. This perspective aligns with a growing environmental theology that sees care for creation as a moral and spiritual imperative. By framing the storms within this context, religious communities can engage with contemporary issues of climate change and environmental justice, providing a holistic understanding that connects faith, action, and responsibility. In a world increasingly fraught with turmoil, spiritual warfare, and escalating conflicts, the concept of the end times has gained renewed relevance and urgency. For believers, preparing for these prophesied events is crucial, and the teachings of Jesus Christ provide a profound foundation for navigating the anticipated trials and tribulations. Relying on Jesus Christ is not merely about seeking refuge in His teachings, but about embracing a transformative faith that equips individuals with strength, hope, and resilience. This preparation involves a deep, personal relationship with Christ adherence to his teachings, and an understanding of celestial signs that serve as symbols of hope amidst the chaos. Jesus Christ's teachings offer a roadmap for spiritual preparedness in the face of impending end times. Central to his message is the call for unwavering faith and vigilance. In the Gospels, Jesus frequently urges his followers to remain watchful and ready for his return, emphasizing the unpredictability of the timing Matthew 24, 36, 44. This exhortation is a call to live righteously, rooted in his commandments of love, compassion, and service. By embodying these virtues, believers fortify their spirits against the deceptions and tribulations that characterize spiritual warfare. This preparation is not passive. It requires active engagement in spiritual disciplines such as prayer, study of the scriptures, and fellowship with other believers, which collectively strengthen one's faith and discernment. Spiritual warfare, as depicted in the New Testament, involves a constant battle against the forces of darkness that seek to undermine faith and sow discord. The Apostle Paul, in his letters, describes the armor of God as essential for this battle. This metaphorical armor includes truth, righteousness, the gospel of peace, faith, salvation, and the word of God elements that are grounded in a relationship with Jesus Christ. By donning this armor, believers are equipped to withstand the spiritual attacks that are expected to intensify as the end times approach. Reliance on Christ provides the strength and courage needed to face these adversities, knowing that victory is assured through Him. In addition to spiritual fortification, understanding the significance of celestial signs is an important aspect of preparing for the end times. Throughout the Bible, celestial events have been used by God to communicate with humanity. The star that guided the Magi to the birthplace of Jesus is one such example, symbolizing divine intervention and guidance. In the context of the end times, Jesus himself refers to signs in the heavens that will herald his return. These signs serve as reminders of God's sovereign control over the cosmos and his ongoing communication with his creation. Rather than inciting fear, these celestial phenomena should be viewed as symbols of hope, affirming that God's plan is unfolding as foretold. 
The escalating battles and tribulations that are expected to mark the end times can be daunting, but they also provide opportunities for the demonstration of unwavering faith and divine intervention. The Book of Revelation, with its vivid imagery of cosmic battles and ultimate triumph, offers a profound message of hope. It assures believers that despite the intensity of the trials, Christ's victory over evil is certain. This eschatological vision encourages believers to persevere, holding fast to their faith in Jesus Christ. The celestial signs that accompany these events are not merely harbingers of doom, but affirmations of God's imminent intervention and the ultimate restoration of His kingdom. In practical terms, preparing for the end times involves cultivating a lifestyle that reflects the teachings of Jesus Christ. This includes fostering a heart of compassion, engaging in acts of service, and maintaining a steadfast commitment to prayer and worship. The parable of the wise and foolish virgins underscores the importance of readiness and vigilance, illustrating that spiritual preparedness is an ongoing process rather than a one-time event. By living in accordance with Christ's teachings, believers can ensure that they are spiritually equipped to face the trials ahead. Furthermore, reliance on Jesus Christ provides an anchor of hope that transcends the fear and uncertainty associated with the end times. His promise to be with his followers, always, to the very end of the age, offers assurance that believers are never alone in their struggles. This divine companionship is a source of comfort and strength, enabling believers to navigate the challenges of the end times with confidence and hope. The presence of Christ in the lives of believers is a testament to His enduring faithfulness and love, which remains steadfast even in the face of escalating conflicts. The role of community and fellowship is also crucial in preparing for the end times. The early Christian communities, as depicted in the Acts of the Apostles, exemplify the power of communal support and shared faith. In times of persecution and trial, these communities found strength in unity, prayer, and mutual support. Modern believers can draw inspiration from this model, recognizing the importance of building and sustaining faith communities that provide spiritual nourishment and support. Engaging in regular worship, Bible study, and communal prayer strengthens the collective faith and fortifies individuals against the spiritual challenges that lie ahead. Moreover, understanding celestial signs as symbols of hope requires a discerning and informed faith. This involves a careful study of biblical prophecies and an awareness of their fulfillment in contemporary events. While it is important to avoid speculative interpretations, a grounded understanding of these signs can provide reassurance and perspective. Recognizing that celestial events are part of God's divine narrative helps believers to maintain a sense of hope and expectation, even as they navigate the uncertainties of the end times. As the Great Tribulation draws near, preparing for the end times by relying on Jesus Christ and understanding the significance of the seven trumpets in Revelation becomes paramount for believers. The Book of Revelation, with its vivid and symbolic imagery, outlines a sequence of divine judgments that will unfold in the last days. Among these, the seven trumpets play a crucial role, each heralding a specific event that signifies the escalating severity of the tribulations to come. Relying on Jesus Christ during these tumultuous times involves deepening one's faith, fostering spiritual resilience, and understanding the profound implications of these apocalyptic signs. The seven trumpets in Revelation, chapters 8-11, represent a series of catastrophic events that serve as divine judgments upon a world that has turned away from God. These trumpets, sounded by angels, signal various calamities that progressively intensify in their impact. For believers, these events are not merely harbingers of doom, but calls to steadfast faith and repentance. The fifth and sixth trumpets in particular highlight the profound spiritual and physical suffering that will befall humanity, underscoring the necessity of relying on Jesus Christ for strength and salvation. The fifth trumpet, described in Revelation 9, 1-12, heralds the release of a fallen star, interpreted as Satan, who unleashes a horde of demonic locusts upon the earth. 
These locusts, with the power to torment those who do not bear the seal of God, symbolize intense spiritual and psychological anguish. Their torment is likened to the sting of a scorpion, causing excruciating pain, but not death. This torment lasts for five months, a period marked by immense suffering for those who have turned away from God. The imagery of this plague underscores the severity of divine judgment and the consequences of spiritual rebellion. For believers, this serves as a stark reminder of the importance of remaining faithful and seeking protection under God's seal. Relying on Jesus Christ during this period involves embracing His teachings, seeking His guidance, and finding solace in His promises of redemption and protection. The sixth trumpet, found in Revelation 9, 13, 21, unleashes four angels bound at the Euphrates River, who lead a massive army of 200 million. This army is tasked with killing one-third of the Earth's population, resulting in unprecedented human suffering and death. The devastation wrought by this army highlights the physical consequences of divine judgment and the pervasive nature of human defiance against God. Despite the catastrophic loss of life, Revelation notes that the survivors still do not repent of their sins, underscoring the hardened state of human hearts and the persistence of rebellion. This unyielding defiance in the face of overwhelming destruction serves as a powerful illustration of the depth of human depravity and the critical need for divine intervention. Understanding the significance of these trumpets in the context of the Great Tribulation involves recognizing their dual role as both judgments and calls to repentance. The torments of the fifth trumpet and the devastation of the sixth trumpet are not merely punitive but also redemptive in intent. They are designed to awaken humanity to the reality of their spiritual state and to prompt a turning back to God. For believers, this understanding fosters a sense of urgency in proclaiming the message of salvation through Jesus Christ. It also reinforces the importance of living a life marked by faith, repentance, and obedience. Relying on Jesus Christ during the unfolding of these events provides believers with the spiritual fortitude necessary to withstand the trials and tribulations of the end times. Jesus' teachings offer a source of hope and resilience, assuring believers that their suffering is not in vain and that their faith will ultimately be rewarded. His promise of eternal life and His victory over sin and death provide a foundation for enduring the hardships that lie ahead. In John 16, Jesus assures His followers, In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. This assurance is particularly poignant in the context of the Great Tribulation, reminding believers that despite the overwhelming challenges, victory is assured through Christ. Moreover, the significance of the seven trumpets extends beyond their immediate judgments to their role in the larger narrative of divine redemption. The book of Revelation culminates in the establishment of God's eternal kingdom, where suffering and death are no more. The trumpets, with their harrowing events, are steps in this divine plan, leading to the ultimate renewal and restoration of creation. For believers, this eschatological perspective provides a framework for understanding the purpose and meaning of their trials. It encourages them to view their suffering in the light of God's redemptive plan, fostering a sense of hope and perseverance. Preparing for the end times involves cultivating a life of spiritual discipline and readiness. This includes regular prayer, meditation on scripture, and active participation in a faith community. These practices help to strengthen one's relationship with Jesus Christ, providing the spiritual nourishment necessary to withstand the tribulations to come. Additionally, believers are called to engage in acts of service and compassion, reflecting Christ's love and mercy to a world in need. This outward expression of faith serves as a testimony to others, inviting them to find hope and salvation in Jesus Christ. The escalation of spiritual warfare and human suffering during the Great Tribulation underscores the critical need for reliance on Jesus Christ. His teachings and promises offer a source of strength, guiding believers through the darkest times. The events signified by the fifth and sixth trumpets highlight the severity of divine judgment and the importance of repentance. By understanding the significance of these celestial signs, 
believers can navigate the end times with faith and hope, knowing that God's ultimate plan is one of redemption and restoration. The sounding of the final trumpet as depicted in the book of Revelation marks a pivotal moment in the narrative of the end times, signaling the imminent conclusion of the tribulation period. This climactic event serves as a divine call to believers to remain steadfast and vigilant, emphasizing the necessity of unwavering faith and preparation for the glorious reign of Jesus Christ amidst the surrounding chaos. The seventh trumpet, often referred to as the last trumpet, heralds the culmination of God's judgment and the ultimate victory of His kingdom, bringing a message of both warning and hope. For believers, this moment is not merely a chronological marker, but a profound spiritual directive to persevere in faith and righteousness as the final chapters of human history unfold. The context of the seventh trumpet is established in Revelation 11:15 to 19, where it is described as the point at which the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. This declaration signifies the transition from the temporary dominion of evil to the eternal reign of Christ. The anticipation of this event calls believers to a heightened state of spiritual alertness and moral integrity. The chaos and suffering of the tribulation period, characterized by widespread persecution, natural disasters, and moral decay, present a formidable challenge to maintaining faith. Yet, it is precisely in these tumultuous times that the call to vigilance becomes most critical. The final trumpet serves as a divine reminder that despite the overwhelming adversities, the faithful are on the cusp of witnessing the fulfillment of God's ultimate promise. Remaining faithful during the tribulation involves a deep and resilient trust in Jesus Christ, who has assured his followers of his return and the establishment of his kingdom. This faith is not passive but active, requiring continuous engagement in spiritual practices such as prayer, worship, and the study of Scripture. These practices help to anchor believers in the truths of their faith, providing the strength and clarity needed to navigate the trials of the end times. Moreover, faith during this period is characterized by a hopeful expectation of Christ's return, which infuses daily life with purpose and direction. The knowledge that the final trumpet will herald the end of suffering and the beginning of Christ's reign encourages believers to persevere knowing that their endurance will be rewarded. Vigilance, on the other hand, involves a constant readiness for Christ's return, living each day with the awareness that the end could come at any moment. This readiness is akin to the biblical parable of the ten virgins, where Jesus teaches the importance of being prepared for the arrival of the bridegroom. In the context of the final trumpet, vigilance means maintaining a posture of spiritual alertness and moral integrity, avoiding the complacency that can arise from the delay of Christ's return. It also involves discerning the signs of the times, understanding the significance of contemporary events in light of biblical prophecy, and responding appropriately with faith and action. The sounding of the final trumpet also underscores the sovereignty and justice of God, who is bringing His divine plan to completion. This event is a culmination of the judgments that have been unfolding throughout the tribulation, each designed to lead humanity to repentance and faith. The finality of the seventh trumpet signals that the time for decision is at hand and the fate of each person is about to be sealed. For believers, this is a sobering reminder of the urgency of their mission to share the gospel and bear witness to the truth of Christ. The imminent conclusion of the tribulation period intensifies the call to evangelism as believers recognize that the opportunity for repentance is rapidly closing. Amidst the chaos and suffering of the tribulation, the final trumpet also serves as a beacon of hope. The promise of Christ's reign assures believers that their present trials are temporary and that a glorious future awaits. This hope is not a mere wishful thinking but a confident expectation grounded in the faithfulness of God. The vision of Christ reigning in glory provides a powerful motivation for perseverance as believers look forward to the day when every tear will be wiped away and all things will be made new. Revelation 21, 4, 5. This eschatological hope shapes the way believers live in the present, enabling them to endure hardships with grace and courage.
Furthermore, the anticipation of Christ's reign amidst the chaos calls for a life of holiness and obedience. Believers are called to reflect the character of Christ in their actions, living as ambassadors of his kingdom. This involves a commitment to ethical living, justice, and compassion, standing in stark contrast to the corruption and evil that characterize the tribulation period. The knowledge that Christ's reign is imminent inspires believers to live with integrity and purpose, knowing that their lives are a testimony to the reality of God's kingdom. The final trumpet also emphasizes the communal aspect of faith as believers are encouraged to support and encourage one another during these challenging times. The early Christian communities as depicted in the Acts of the Apostles serve as a model for this, demonstrating the power of fellowship and mutual support in sustaining faith. In the context of the end times, this communal aspect becomes even more critical as believers face persecution and trials together. By fostering strong spiritual communities, believers can draw strength from one another, holding each other accountable and encouraging perseverance. The sounding of the final trumpet signals the imminent conclusion of the tribulation period, urging believers to remain faithful and vigilant in anticipation of Christ's reign amidst the chaos. This climactic event serves as a divine call to deepen one's faith, engage in active spiritual practices, and maintain a posture of readiness for Christ's return. The final trumpet underscores the sovereignty and justice of God, the urgency of the gospel mission, and the hope of Christ's glorious reign. Amidst the suffering and trials of the tribulation, believers are called to live with integrity, purpose, and a confident expectation of the fulfillment of God's promises. By relying on Jesus Christ and understanding the significance of the final trumpet, believers can navigate the end times with resilience and hope, assured of the ultimate victory and the establishment of God's eternal kingdom. The concept of the rapture and the second coming of Christ are two pivotal events in Christian eschatology, each with distinct characteristics and profound implications for believers. According to many interpretations of biblical prophecy, the rapture is an event that will occur before the onset of the seven-year tribulation period, serving as a divine act of deliverance for believers. The second coming of Christ, on the other hand, is anticipated to occur at the conclusion of the tribulation, marking a dramatically different return compared to his first advent. Understanding these events and their differences is crucial for comprehending the broader narrative of end-time prophecy. The rapture, as described in passages such as 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, 17 and 1 Corinthians 15, 51, 52, is the moment when believers in Christ, both those who have died and those who are still alive, will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. This event is characterized by its suddenness and secrecy, often depicted as happening in the twinkling of an eye. The primary purpose of the rapture is to remove the faithful from the earth before the onset of the tribulation, a period of unprecedented suffering and divine judgment. This interpretation, known as the pre-tribulation rapture, suggests that God, in His mercy, spares His people from the wrath that is to come, as referenced in Revelation 3.10, where Jesus promises to keep believers from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. The pre-tribulation rapture provides a profound sense of hope and assurance for believers, emphasizing God's protective care. It suggests that the church will be spared the horrors of the tribulation, a time marked by the rise of the Antichrist, widespread deception, and intense persecution of those who come to faith during this period. The belief in the rapture also underscores the importance of readiness and vigilance, as Jesus taught in Matthew 24:44. So you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect Him. For many Christians, the anticipation of the rapture fosters a sense of urgency in living out their faith, evangelizing and maintaining a state of spiritual preparedness. In contrast, the second coming of Christ occurs at the end of the tribulation and is distinctly different from the rapture. The second coming, often referred to as the glorious appearing, is described in vivid detail in passages such as Revelation 19, 11, 16 and Matthew 24, 29, 31. Unlike the secretive nature of the rapture, the second coming will be a visible 
triumphant event witnessed by all. Christ will return not as a humble servant, as he did in his first coming, but as a conquering king and judge. He will descend from heaven with great power and glory, accompanied by the armies of heaven, to establish his millennial kingdom on earth. The second coming signifies the culmination of divine judgment against the forces of evil. It will be a time of reckoning for the Antichrist and his followers, who will be defeated and cast into the lake of fire. This event will also bring about the resurrection of the saints who were martyred during the tribulation, as described in Revelation 24-6. The second coming marks the definitive end of human rebellion and the inauguration of a period of peace and righteousness, where Christ will reign with his saints for a thousand years. This era, often referred to as the Millennium, is characterized by the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies concerning the restoration of Israel and the establishment of global justice and harmony. The differences between the rapture and the second coming highlight the multifaceted nature of Christ's work in the end times. The rapture emphasizes deliverance and the blessed hope of believers being united with Christ before the tribulation's trials begin. It underscores God's mercy and the promise of protection for His Church. On the other hand, the Second Coming emphasizes judgment and the establishment of Christ's righteous rule. It reflects the fulfillment of God's promises to bring justice and to restore creation to its intended glory. Moreover, the Second Coming will be accompanied by cosmic disturbances and dramatic signs in the heavens, as described in Matthew 24, 29-31. These signs will serve as unmistakable indicators of Christ's imminent return, unlike the unexpected nature of the rapture. The visibility and grandeur of the Second Coming will leave no doubt about Christ's identity and authority, compelling every knee to bow and every tongue to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Philippians 2, 10-11 The theological implications of these two events are profound. The rapture and the Second Coming together illustrate the comprehensive scope of God's redemptive plan. The rapture assures believers of their secure place in God's kingdom, fostering a sense of peace and anticipation. It encourages the church to live with an eternal perspective, focusing on the hope of being with Christ. The Second Coming, with its emphasis on judgment and restoration, challenges believers to remain faithful amidst adversity, knowing that ultimate justice and vindication are assured. It reinforces the message that Christ's return will bring an end to all suffering and evil, ushering in a new era of divine governance. No. For the Church, the doctrines of the Rapture and the Second Coming serve as both comfort and challenge. They provide comfort in the promise of deliverance and eternal fellowship with Christ, while also challenging believers to live holy and obedient lives in anticipation of His return. The knowledge of these future events calls for a balanced approach to life, one that is rooted in the assurance of salvation, yet mindful of the urgency to share the gospel and live righteously. We should notice that the rapture and the second coming of Christ are two distinct yet interconnected events in Christian eschatology, each with its unique purpose and significance. The rapture, occurring before the seven-year tribulation, emphasizes God's mercy and the deliverance of the faithful from impending judgment. The second coming, taking place at the end of the tribulation, heralds the triumph of Christ over evil and the establishment of his eternal kingdom. Understanding these events helps believers to remain faithful and vigilant, living in readiness for the return of their Savior and King. Together, the rapture and the second coming offer a comprehensive vision of hope, judgment, and ultimate restoration, reinforcing the call to live with an eternal perspective and steadfast faith in the promises of God. The return of Jesus Christ as a mighty warrior king, as described in the book of Revelation, presents a powerful and transformative vision of his second coming. This event is a cornerstone of Christian eschatology, symbolizing the ultimate triumph of good over evil and the establishment of divine justice. The imagery in Revelation is rich and evocative, painting a picture of Jesus not as the gentle shepherd of his first coming, but as a fearsome conqueror, leading an army from heaven to vanquish his foes and reclaim the earth for righteousness. In Revelation 19, 11, 16, 
the Apostle John describes a breathtaking scene of Christ's return. I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse, whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and wages war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has this name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This passage captures the awe-inspiring nature of Christ's return. Riding a white horse, a symbol of victory and conquest, Jesus is portrayed as faithful and true, embodying the ultimate standard of justice and righteousness. His eyes, like blazing fire, signify his omniscient gaze that pierces through all pretense and deceit. The many crowns on his head represent his supreme authority over all earthly and heavenly realms. This vivid imagery starkly contrasts his first advent, where he came in humility and suffering to offer salvation. In his second coming, he arrives as a divine warrior to execute judgment and establish his dominion. The description of his robe dipped in blood is particularly striking. This blood is not his own, shed for the salvation of humanity, but the blood of his enemies, symbolizing the victory over those who have opposed him. This depiction aligns with the Old Testament prophecies of the Messiah who will bring judgment and salvation. Isaiah 63, 1-6, for example, describes the Lord coming from Edom with his garments stained in blood, having trodden the winepress alone, symbolizing his wrath against the nations. This powerful imagery underscores the seriousness and finality of his judgment. Accompanying Jesus are the armies of heaven, also riding white horses and dressed in fine linen, representing the saints and angels. This celestial army signifies the participation of the redeemed and the angelic host in the final victory over evil. Their presence highlights the communal aspect of divine justice and the fulfillment of God's promise to involve His people in the final judgment and renewal of creation. The fine linen, white and clean, symbolizes the righteousness of the saints, granted to them through Christ's redemptive work. The sharp sword coming out of his mouth represents the power of his word to judge and destroy. This imagery echoes Hebrews 4.12, which describes the word of God as living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. The sword signifies that Jesus' judgments are executed by the power of his spoken word, affirming his authority and the truth of his proclamations. The phrase, he will rule them with an iron scepter, further emphasizes his absolute authority and the unyielding nature of his reign, fulfilling the prophecy of Psalm 2.9. The climactic moment of Christ's return involves the final confrontation with the forces of evil, including the Antichrist and his followers. Revelation 19.19.21 depicts the beast and the kings of the earth gathering to wage war against the rider on the horse and his army. However, the battle is decisively won by Christ, who captures the beast and the false prophet, casting them into the lake of fire. This act symbolizes the ultimate defeat of evil and the eradication of those who have led humanity astray. The rest of their followers are slain by the sword that proceeds from Christ's mouth, emphasizing the power and finality of his judgment. The return of Jesus as a warrior king is not merely an act of destruction, but a necessary step in the restoration of divine order and justice. It signifies the end of human history as governed by sin and the beginning of Christ's righteous reign. This event fulfills the hope of countless generations of believers who have awaited the day when God's kingdom would be fully realized on earth as it is in heaven. It is a moment of vindication for the martyrs and saints who have suffered for their faith as justice is finally served. Moreover, Christ's second coming as a warrior king underscores the themes of divine sovereignty and the ultimate triumph of good over evil. It reaffirms the biblical narrative that history is moving towards a definitive end where God's purposes will be fulfilled and His justice will prevail. 
This understanding provides believers with a sense of hope and assurance, knowing that despite the current suffering and chaos, a time of restoration and peace is assured. The significance of Jesus returning as a mighty warrior king also challenges believers to live in readiness and faithfulness. The anticipation of his return calls for a life of holiness, vigilance, and commitment to the mission of the gospel. It inspires believers to persevere in the face of adversity, to uphold justice, and to remain steadfast in their faith, knowing that their efforts are not in vain. The return of Jesus Christ is a central tenet of Christian eschatology, encapsulating his roles as judge, king, and savior. According to biblical prophecy, Jesus will return to execute divine judgment, defeat his enemies, and establish his millennial reign, while the great white throne judgment will address the fate of unbelievers. This multifaceted return underscores the necessity for believers to maintain faith in Christ, live godly lives, and share the gospel with others. The culmination of history in Jesus' return is not merely a theological construct, but a call to active, faithful living in anticipation of the fulfillment of God's promises. The return of Jesus in judgment is vividly described in the book of Revelation. Revelation 19.11-16 portrays him as a mighty warrior, riding a white horse and leading the armies of heaven. His eyes blaze like fire, and he wears many crowns symbolizing his supreme authority. From his mouth issues a sharp sword, representing the power of his word to judge and conquer. This imagery signifies not just a moment of reckoning, but the ultimate triumph of righteousness over evil. Jesus' return in judgment will be swift and decisive, bringing an end to the rebellion against God that has plagued humanity since the fall. In this context, Jesus will reign over all nations, fulfilling prophecies such as those found in Psalm 289 and Isaiah 967. His reign will be characterized by justice, peace, and righteousness, marking a stark contrast to the world's current state. This millennial reign described in Revelation 21 to 6 will last for a thousand years, a period during which Satan will be bound and unable to deceive the nations. This era will be a time of unparalleled peace and prosperity as Christ rules with an iron scepter, ensuring that his divine law is upheld. The millennial kingdom represents the fulfillment of God's promises to Israel and the realization of his kingdom on earth. The defeat of Christ's enemies is a central aspect of his return. Revelation 19, 19 to 21 depicts the final battle where the beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies gather to wage war against Jesus and his heavenly host. The outcome is assured. The beast and the false prophet are captured and thrown into the lake of fire while their followers are slain by the sword from Jesus' mouth. This victory signifies the end of all earthly powers that oppose God and the establishment of Christ's uncontested rule. It is a moment of vindication for the saints and a fulfillment of God's justice. Following the millennial reign, the great white throne judgment will take place, as described in Revelation 20, 11 to 15. This judgment is reserved for unbelievers those who have rejected God's offer of salvation through Christ. John describes seeing a great white throne and him who was seated on it, from whose presence earth and sky fled. The dead, great and small, stand before the throne, and books are opened, including the Book of Life. The dead are judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. Anyone whose name is not found in the Book of Life is thrown into the lake of fire. This judgment underscores the seriousness of rejecting God's grace and the eternal consequences of unbelief. Given the certainty of Jesus' return and the judgments that will follow, believers are called to a life of faith and obedience. Faith in Christ is foundational, as it is through faith that one is justified and made righteous before God, Romans 5 or 1. This faith is not passive but active, manifesting in a life that seeks to honor God and follow His commandments. Living for God involves pursuing holiness, practicing justice, loving mercy, and walking humbly with Him, Micah 6, 8. It means aligning one's life with God's will, prioritizing His kingdom, 
and embodying the values of Christ in everyday actions. Sharing the gospel is an essential aspect of living faithfully in light of Jesus' return. The Great Commission, Matthew 28, 19 to 20, commands believers to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to obey everything Jesus has commanded. This mission is urgent, as the return of Christ signifies the final opportunity for individuals to accept God's offer of salvation. Sharing the gospel involves not only proclaiming the message of salvation, but also living in such a way that reflects the transformative power of Christ's love. It is a call to be salt and light in a world that desperately needs the hope and redemption found in Jesus. The anticipation of Jesus' return should infuse believers' lives with a sense of purpose and urgency. It calls for vigilance, as Jesus himself warned in Matthew 24, 42, 44, urging his followers to be ready, because he will come at an hour they do not expect. This readiness involves spiritual preparedness, characterized by a deep and abiding relationship with Christ, regular engagement with Scripture, and a commitment to prayer. It also means being alert to the signs of the times and discerning the spiritual realities behind worldly events. Moreover, the promise of Christ's return provides profound comfort and hope, especially in times of suffering and injustice. It assures believers that despite the current trials and tribulations, a day of restoration and renewal is coming. Revelation 21.4 promises that God will wipe away every tear and there will be no more death, mourning, crying, or pain. This future reality gives strength to endure present hardships and inspires believers to persevere in their faith. In conclusion, the return of Jesus Christ as judge and king, the defeat of his enemies, and the establishment of his thousand-year reign are central themes in Christian eschatology. These events underscore the importance of faith in Christ, living a life that honors God, and sharing the gospel with others. The Great White Throne Judgment highlights the eternal consequences of rejecting God's grace, emphasizing the urgency of evangelism. As believers await Jesus' return, they are called to remain vigilant, live righteously, and actively participate in God's mission to redeem and restore creation. This anticipation not only shapes their spiritual lives, but also provides hope and assurance amidst the challenges of the present world, reminding them of the ultimate victory and eternal reign of Christ. In moments of crisis and uncertainty, prayer provides a refuge for those grappling with fear, loss, and despair. It acts as a sanctuary where the faithful can pour out their hearts, unburden their souls, and find comfort in the belief that they are not alone. This sense of divine companionship imbues individuals with a strength that goes beyond human understanding, enabling them to face adversity with courage and hope. For instance, during natural disasters, wars, or personal tragedies, people often turn to prayer to find the inner strength to endure and the wisdom to navigate their challenges. It is in these fervent moments of supplication that many report feeling an overwhelming sense of calm and assurance, as if being gently cradled by a benevolent presence. Moreover, prayer fosters a profound sense of connection, not only with the divine, but also with others who share the same faith. In communal settings, prayer becomes a unifying force, bringing together individuals in a shared expression of belief and hope. This collective act of worship strengthens bonds within communities creating a support network that is vital during times of need. For example, congregations gathering in prayer during a communal crisis often experience a powerful sense of solidarity, reinforcing their collective resilience and fostering a spirit of mutual care and compassion. These communal prayers amplify the individual's sense of belonging and purpose, reinforcing the notion that together they can overcome any obstacle. On a more personal level, Prayer serves as a daily practice of introspection and spiritual growth. It provides a structured moment of pause and reflection, allowing individuals to align their hearts and minds with their spiritual values. This regular engagement with the divine cultivates a mindset of gratitude, humility, and mindfulness, qualities that are essential for navigating life's complexities with grace. For many, 
The act of praying is a way to center themselves, to reconnect with their innermost selves, and to reaffirm their faith and trust in a higher power. This ongoing dialogue with the divine nurtures a sense of inner peace and fortitude that sustains them through both mundane and extraordinary challenges. The accessibility of prayer is one of its most compelling attributes. It requires no special training, tools, or intermediaries, making it a powerful force available to all who believe. Whether whispered in the quiet of one's heart, chanted in a group, or recited from sacred texts, prayer is a bridge between mortal pleas and divine compassion. This universality ensures that anyone, regardless of their circumstances, can reach out and touch the divine, finding solace and strength in their moments of need. The simplicity of prayer belies its profound impact, as countless individuals attest to the transformative power of their prayerful encounters. The efficacy of prayer, however, is not solely reliant on its ability to invoke divine intervention. Much of its power lies in its capacity to transform the one who prays. Through prayer, individuals often experience a shift in perspective, gaining clarity and insight into their situations. This mental and emotional realignment can lead to a greater sense of agency and empowerment, enabling them to act with renewed vigor and purpose. For example, someone struggling with a difficult decision might find through prayer a newfound sense of direction and confidence, perceiving their path forward with greater clarity. This inner transformation is a testament to the profound psychological and spiritual benefits of prayer, which extend beyond the immediate act of supplication. Furthermore, the act of prayer is a declaration of faith and trust in a higher power, a surrendering of one's worries and burdens to a benevolent force. This act of surrender is itself a source of strength, as it acknowledges human limitations and the need for divine support. By entrusting their concerns to the divine, individuals can experience a release from anxiety and fear, finding peace in the knowledge that they are cared for and guided. This relinquishment of control is not an act of resignation, but one of profound faith, affirming the belief that there is a greater plan at work, even when circumstances seem dire. In many religious traditions, prayer is also seen as a conduit for receiving divine grace. Grace, often understood as unmerited favor or blessing, is believed to flow through prayer, providing individuals with the strength and fortitude needed to face life's challenges. This grace is not earned through deeds or merit, but is generously bestowed by a loving and compassionate higher power. Those who engage in prayer often speak of experiencing a sense of being uplifted and supported, as if an invisible hand is guiding them through their trials. This experience of divine grace reinforces their faith and encourages them to continue seeking solace and strength through prayer. The stories of individuals who have found strength and transformation through prayer are as varied as they are inspiring. Take, for instance, the account of a single mother who, facing insurmountable odds, turned to prayer each night for strength and guidance. Despite the many challenges she faced, she found within herself an unyielding resilience and a sense of peace that carried her through the darkest times. Or consider the story of a soldier in the midst of battle who found solace and courage in his prayers, enabling him to perform acts of bravery and compassion amidst the chaos of war. These personal testimonies highlight the enduring power of prayer to inspire, uplift, and transform lives. The Bible is full of stories of prayer and instructions around prayer. Prayer is an integral part of Christian life. The Bible makes it clear that God hears our prayers. He wants us to pray to Him and that He indeed answers them. He may not always answer them in the way we want Him to but we can be confident that he works all things for the good of those who love him, Romans 8.28. In the New Testament, several people pray in their hearts or directly to Jesus, and he answers them. Paul fills his letters with comments about prayer as a means of encouragement, connecting with God and lifting others up. We serve an awesome God who is so mighty that he created every galaxy in the universe and is also so mighty that he hears and cares about every silent prayer that we whisper to him from the depths of our hearts. Prayer is not about just asking God for what we need and also not just about thanking him for giving us what we asked for. It goes so very much deeper than that. It is about connecting with him, 
sharing our hearts with him, staying focused on him, and probably most important, listening to him. The history of the world shows the power and beauty of a life lived in prayer to God. God's purpose may be thwarted or it may be accomplished depending, to one degree or another, on the obedience of his people and their willingness to use the weapons of spiritual warfare that he has provided. God is powerful enough to win any battle, but he has designed things so that the release of his power at a given moment of time often is contingent upon the decisions and the actions of his people. A principal weapon of spiritual warfare is prayer. Not just routine or mediocre prayer, but prayer powerful enough to move God's hand in order to determine the destiny of a whole nation. See Peter Wagner. Do we realize the power we have available to us when we take our authority in prayer? Most of us don't realize our authority because if we did, we would be praying far more. We would be sacrificing everything else in order to pray. Instead of worrying about the increase in evil in our land, we would be on our faces before God crying out for his intervention. Unfortunately, in many churches, prayer is the weakest link. It should be the strongest one because it is the key to God's blessing in the spirit realm. America is a nation in crisis. Division, strife, and violence are increasing at an alarming rate. We must encourage the body of Christ everywhere to pray for the future of this nation and for this upcoming election. Several Christian leaders have indicated that this is a one-issue election, the Supreme Court judges. The most serious threat over America is the 55 million abortions. More abortions will lead to a greater judgment. There is more at stake in this election than most of us realize. We are battling for the soul of this nation. We work together with God when we exercise our authority in prayer. Authoritative intercession and heartfelt repentance is key to breakthroughs in America. By exercising our authority in prayer and standing strong in God's truth, we are working together with Him to determine the future of our nation. We have authority in prayer to actually see our personal lives and the lives of others change. We can pray authoritative prayers for our neighborhoods and cities. Certain things in history will happen through our intercession if we pray the way God wants us to pray. We can change nations through prayer if we choose to use this mighty weapon. Prayer is like being at a tasty buffet banquet. Imagine being at a dinner buffet where there are many tables loaded with different foods. The foods are the best. They are mouth-watering and absolutely delicious. Guests help themselves to the different kinds of food as they desire. The host walks around among his friends to see if everyone has enough to eat, while the servers keep loading the table with fresh food. You can take as many trips as you like to the tables as long as you have enough to eat. The host doesn't care as long as you are full. In a similar way, God has provided everything for us if we pray. We can have all we need. Most of us have not realized the power there is in prayer. We are not asking. All we have to do is reach out by faith and ask Him to touch our lives, our cities, and our nations. When we tap into His resources by faith and pray, miracles happen. When we exercise our authority in prayer, God answers in a powerful way. There is a strength and power in prayer that the church has not yet known or realized. And the body of Christ also has a task. We want to change the world for Christ. It's a huge task for all of us, but we do it one life at a time. Some are reaching people in their workplace or in another country. Some are reaching people in the hospitals or in the schools. We are all in this together. We want to see people's lives changed all over the world before Jesus returned to earth, but the task is huge and we need the right tools to do it. The most essential tool is prayer. Only through prayer can we get the job done. There is strength and power in prayer that can change the world. When we pray with authority, things happen in the spirit realm. God remembers every prayer we pray, and every one of them prayed through the power of the Holy Spirit has an effect on earth. When we realize the authority we have in prayer, mighty things will happen all over the earth that bring victory to the powerful name of Jesus. Prayer takes time. We have to learn to wait and believe. One day you will see that your prayers have had a mighty effect in the spiritual realm. Do not give up or ever think it is not important to pray today. If ever there was a need for intercession for America, it is now. We are in a key time in all of history. We must not fear the future or believe the lies of the enemy, but we must stand strong in authoritative prayer. Fear weakens us and gives us an unsound mind. 
Instead, we must know our authority in prayer to see mighty changes on earth, in our own personal lives, and in our nation. We can pray God's future plan into being through our intercession. If we pray strategic, authoritative, and prophetic prayers, then we will be praying the future into being. Authority is the key to strength and power. We have awesome responsibility. Well, that's all about today's video. If you enjoy this video, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you in the next videos. Goodbye.